Michael. Um, do you believe that organ donation should be mandatory? I do not. You do not. Okay, so if you believe that even a dead person has the right to bodily autonomy, even if that dead person's organs could save up to eight lives, and yet you also believe that women should be legally mandated to sacrifice their bodily autonomy in order to save the life of a fetus, uh, by your own logic, a corpse has more right to bodily autonomy than a living, breathing woman. Well, you, you imposed upon me a liberal view that I do not hold, which is mm -hmm. that my views of abortion come from some sense of bodily autonomy. I'm not a huge autonomy guy to begin with. I don't think that I own my body. I think my body is sort of a gift, you know, and I have obligations to my creator. Uh, the reason that I don't support mandatory organ donation is not because of some liberal conception of autonomy or something. It's, it's because that's not what your organs are for. Your, your organs are for you. Your lungs are to bring oxygen to your blood. Your heart is to pump blood around your body. Your liver is to take care of what I will probably do later on at the bar after this speech, <laughs> and so on and so forth. Uh, my organs are not for you. Your organs are not for me. So you, you can give an organ donation, that, and that can be a lovely thing to do, but you aren't obligated for it because things are known largely by what they are for. Um, huh. Okay. Uh, it sounded like you were just going to be anti-organ donation for a second. I was like, that's weird. No, um, no. I'm but, just, I'm, I'm, but I am against, uh, you know, going in and stealing people's organs. I think that would be quite wrong. Uh-huh. Uh, stealing from a person who isn't alive, which gives well, just, them well, Yeah, I, I think right desecrating of, bodies is pretty bad, right you know, or like than... digging up graves is bad too, yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, so, uh... If you don't believe that withholding resources, like life-saving organs, which you would die about without if you have organ failure, if you don't believe that withholding resources like that means that you're killing a person, would you be pro-cutting the umbilical cord rather than removing a fetus so that the fetus would no longer be able to grow without the nutrients it needs? Uh, I'm um, a, I'm a fr oh, no, I think it would be wrong for a mother to kill her child. So I, I don't so, view, I don't view uh, my organs, say, as resources, as you've put it in a kind of like materialist liberal they way. Are. I, yeah, I, I, I kind of think of them as my organs, you know, and I think of my body as like me, my body, and I think of me as a person, not just a big sack of flesh that can be chopped up for the pleasure of some liberal technocrat. Uh, call me old-fashioned, I guess. Uh, but, but then you turn to this example and you say, well, okay, what about cutting the umbilical cord of, a, I mean, eventually you do cut the umbilical cord when, when the baby comes out, but uh, what about cutting the umbilical cord or otherwise killing the baby? I think that would uh, be quite wrong to do because um, your, your baby is not for your killing. <laughs> you know, that's, that, uh, your, your baby is, is not um, uh, justifying some kind of murder. That, that's, that was the topic of our, of our uh, discussion tonight. And uh, f furthermore, a woman's womb, which is another organ that you haven't brought up, is, has a purpose too. And the, the purpose of the woman's womb is to grow a baby. And the baby is not just you know, a clump of cells or a, a, a parasite or, or a, any other dehumanizing way that the liberals talk about it. The baby is your baby. And when, when mothers kill their babies, that's contrary to reason and contrary to nature. Um, so... Back to what I was saying, you kind of, you love doing this thing where you go off about some nonsense that isn't what the original question was about. Logic, um, yes, yeah, but, I know. I do occasionally, <laughs> logic, do logic occentially apply entirely that. entirely unrelated to what I was saying in the first place. But uh, uh, What were you saying? Um, Perhaps I misunderstood. I thought I understood. You misunderstood. You um, so withholding resources. <laughs> right. Without, yeah, I, I suppose I just, I just don't. Without which someone will die. Yeah, I, when I suppose When you have organ I, failure, not having an organ donor kills you. Surprise. Um, so withholding resources from them, that isn't killing, that isn't wrong, but withholding resources from a growing fetus, somehow that's different. And the, yeah. the well, way as you I tried make to that leap, so I'm, I'm getting confused there. Uh, you are getting confused. Uh, as, I, as I tried to explain, you, you are uh, beginning with a premise that all of our organs are just undifferentiated resources to which any of us might be entitled. And that's an, a novel view. It's a view held by, I guess, some rather extreme liberals or materialists, but it's not a view held by me. I don't think that it's all just undifferentiated flesh. I think that uh, things like organs have both form 
and matter. So there's the matter, there's the flesh, there's the stuff, but then there's the form, which, which tells you about what that thing is. And so and my liver might look a lot like your liver, but they're different livers. One's mine, for instance, and one is yours. So you don't have a right to mine, and I don't have a right to yours, because your liver is for you, and my liver is for me. And we, we all know this, and we all act that way. That's why you're not coming up here and attacking me and ripping my kidneys out and selling it on a market in Wuhan or something like that. But, but we pretend that we don't uh, believe these things because it helps to advance an argument which is totally indefensible and unnatural, uh, namely that we ought to kill a baby or something like that. So your organs are for you and you alone. Yeah. You get to decide what to do with them. But a woman doesn't get that choice about her womb, about her ovaries. Well, the baby about is her not uterus. an organ of no, hers. A so baby is an individual human being. You get to make choices about your internal organs, but a living, breathing woman does not. Well, the, okay, I understand. No, that. I don't you. think you do understand because <laughs> I, understand. I, I don't think you understand very well at all, unfortunately, <laughs> because you're suggesting that the baby is a, an organ of the woman, which is preposterous. Obviously, you know the baby is differentiated from organs by its DNA, by how it will develop, by, I don't, I don't think she's listening to the rest of my answer. Uh, You're not worth listening to, Matt. <laughs> Matt! <laughs> you know what that was like? That, that girl knows something so smart, which is when I was a young man, a single guy, right, the best way that you could really, if you liked a girl and, you know, the girl was seeing some other guy, the best way you could needle the guy is by getting the guy's name right. You say, hey, you know, how's uh, Mark doing these days? <laughs> oh, actually, his name is Mag. Oh, yeah, whatever. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Real nice. It's smoky, it's not Smoky Matt, not Smoky Ben, not Smoky Candace. Mr. Michael Knowles yes. has time for one more question. Only one more. These are good. I want to get more questions. Hi, Michael. I'm Heidi. Hi, Heidi. I was who do your today's favorite You were comment. what? I was your today's favorite comment. Oh, hey, no way. <laughs> oh, man. Wow, what are the odds? That's great. Great to meet you in person. Oh, wow, fabulous. Um, anyway, um, I had a question prepared. And um, let me preface just by saying I'm 56 years old, and um, before I was 38, I lived a life of self-destruction, and I got sober at 38. And, uh, and um, my entire worldview changed because I came out of a fog. Um, but the girl that was standing in front of me that asked you that question, um, I was just having a quick short chat with the guy behind me and I mentioned ectopic pregnancy yep. and she darted around and started yelling at me that ectopic pregnancy is abortion and I told her no I've had two so I know that it's not abortion yeah there um, would be it was sort of what we were talking about earlier like the principle of double effect you could treat the ectopic pregnancy uh, your intention, your express intention is not to kill the child, obviously. It's to treat the medical condition. A consequence of that will be that the, ch the child will die. But that would, be a, that would be a principle of double effect, just like um, self-defense. My understanding is that it gets stuck in your tube and there's no going forward or back. Yeah. So there's nothing they can do but to surgically, and it's emergency surgery, I almost died twice. Um, they actually gave me an experimental drug the first time, or the second, I can't remember. Anyway, one of the times they gave me, oh, the first time, uh, because I was poor, and uh, I didn't have insurance. And uh, so they gave me an experimental drug, and my tube burst, and I almost bled to death. Whoa. So um, anyway, so my question is kind of tied into that story. Um, People my age were brought up with the fact that abortion is wrong. Um, I was raised Catholic, but I was raised on Cape Cod, um, which is a very liberal area. Um, but it was still wrong. It was still something that was shameful. It was something that you didn't tell your friends you were doing or um, announce to the world. You know, you kept it to yourself and you kept that shame to yourself. And um, I am a murderer, um, as well as having two ectopic pregnancies. 
Um, I made bad, bad choices in my life. Um, a lot due to my alcoholism, but many not. You know, many um, were based on just the way I was brought up, things I were ta was taught in school, um, whatever. Yep. So my question is, um, you guys, can I you lift this up a little? I'm sorry. I'm <laughs> you don't want to stoop um, over. That's not what it's you guys talk a lot about abortion on The Daily Wire. I'm a huge fan. I watch all of you guys. Um, but I never see anybody talking about regret or remorse. Yeah. Um, I think it's important. Um, I think because my generation grew up in that shame um, and what I believe... Um, I think it's important for us to talk to the younger people about these things. Um, it's so beautifully said because that, that's such a shift. It's not that now all of a sudden people are having abortions. People have had or tried to have abortions for uh, quite a long time now. Uh, it, it's that shift of it used to be a shameful thing. Even 30 years ago, the Clintons said uh, abortion ought to be safe, legal, and rare, which of course was incoherent. If it's murder, it shouldn't be legal. If it's, if it's you know, like getting your appendix taken out, then it shouldn't be rare. But, but it was perfect Clintonian gobbledygook. Even they, though, you know, hypocrisy is the tribute vice pays to virtue. Even they understood that it, it is a shameful thing and they didn't want to exalt it. Now we have shout your abortion. Now we have be proud of your abortion. Go get an abortion cake and, and celebrate. I mean, uh, the example I used is that's not a, a hyperbole. That, that sort of thing really happens. Um, th that shift is, is uh, amazing. And it's, I, I suspect, because now we are not even permitted to have standards. I, I suspect it's because people feel a certain cognitive dissonance. And it's very difficult to live with shame, especially if you won't turn your life around and repent and you know, go, it, it's very difficult to live with that. So you can either change your behavior or you can change your opinions. And uh, guess which people choose most often? It's the latter. Um, I just wanted to just say one more thing that um, if there is any time or um, any place that you guys would like to hear a pretty bizarre, pretty heinous, but um, good ending story. Um, I have repented. Um, Jesus Christ is my savior. And, and um, it doesn't discount what I did, but it helps me move on in the light of Christ, and I appreciate you listening. Thanks. That's beautiful. Thank you for coming, and I'd certainly love to hear more. Thank you.